Welcome to another episode guys. Today is gonna be fun stuff. I am going to pick something up that's gonna hopefully help uh, with a recovery project that just uh, landed uh, early this week. The funny fact about this place, over to my right, there is a cemetery. Then there is a plaza that we're pulling up to right now, where the Deep Spire building is. And then after that plaza, the cemetery continues. So I don't know <laughs> how this occurred, but this plaza is built in between two cemeteries or in the middle of a cemetery part that wasn't used so I don't know it's kind of creepy when I was editing this I just realized that there's some key moment that I missed to this uh, cemetery thing after working there for several years I got my own office where I opened up my company and started doing data recovery uh, as a service and uh, the number for the building was 666 I kid you not that was the number on the building it's still there I pass through that building almost every day because it's on my commute and a lot of great memories actually associated with that building but I was working in the basement of that building and uh, to be honest with you there's been several clients the moment they find out that the building number is 666 they uh, had a slight change to their voice either said directly that they're not going there or they never showed up. All right, guys, so we're here. Mission success. In case you're wondering why it looks like it's snowing outside and why am I wearing a winter coat uh, in the middle of summer, it's not a summer in the video. The video was shot sometime in the winter, obviously. Uh, it was initially posted on Patreon, but I just remembered that I never posted it here. I wanted to share it with you guys, so enjoy the show. I got the package, I got my bag, uh, in my bag, I have our donor, we have three chips, one SSD with pads completely missing. Client wanted to upgrade the heat sink, which I highly recommend nobody to do, and uh, in the end, he ended up ripping out three out of four NANDs, which is pretty bad. At this moment, I was facing an issue. I had to figure out where each chip supposed to go. Since all three of them were already off the board, with the help of a microscope, uh, this became an interesting game. I had to look at the patterns of build out pads and see what they correspond with on the board. <laughs> yeah, because they're all ripped all the pads out completely. We need to match them by how they get ripped. You see this pad here has a connection to a via like it does in this section it has a tiny bit like it does in here it has uh, these claw looking things ripped like here and here it's pretty safe to assume that this chip belongs to this board right here and it was sitting this way Okay, so we have a data pointing towards the bottom and this one points towards the connector to the top. If we cross-reference it with the connected board, we see that it's the same. This is going to be chip one. This is going to be chip two. That could be a problem. These look very much alike. You have a complete loop missing and one of these doesn't. So let's um, check out the board. You see here is the half an eyelid ripped out. On this chip we have a full eyelid ripped out. So maybe half of the eyelid remains somewhere. So if the chip goes in this way, right? If the chip goes in this way, the eyelid would be ripped here. One, two, one, two. And on this chip, we have a little bit of it remaining. 
and on this ship we have it completely gone and the second one is tiny bit of it is remaining let's see you guys can see that right <clears throat> there's a tiny bit remaining here completely gone eyelid there's a completely gone eyelid there's a half of the eyelid here so there is a chip three we were right about that so that leaves us with um, confirmed chip four being this guy two half open eyelids two remaining pieces leaves us no choice but to go this way this chip goes in like that and if you cross-reference it with the good board yeah everything lines up I'm gonna take this to PC3000 so whether should we swap a controller or not I want to see how that controller mounts because I would like to swap it but it's glued you know that is glued onto the board I don't want to disturb it I know I can remove it if we don't have to I'd rather not okay that unit starts up comes up to uh, what seems to be a ready status and if we read the device we can see it's a uh, data swordfish blah 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 seems to be reading how critical it is for us to keep the controller in this case I don't know but my gut says that is it will be fine and uh, we can just go and swap it if it doesn't work it will drop us into a safe mode and then we'll swap the controller over no big deal so the chips will need to be rebold the ssd oh they bent the ssd so bad or maybe it's just flexible naturally kind of strange because <laughs> look it's not a everyday situation where you get an SSD like this but it's kind of really really flexible I feel like that chip is barely holding on if anything it will be easy to remove it oh and one more thing the controller here is not glued you see that it's not glued in it is glued in on my swordfish so what do you say when I remove this chip I remove the controller with it and just to be on the safe side if it's easy swap I don't mind taking it over if it's an easy reball I mean if it's easy to reball this chip I have no problems with running that process as well let's compare the numbers first but they should be the same the same boards probably same numbers rts 5766dl we here we have l 520pp1 the bottom section is not the same this is not silicone this is some kind of glue but I think that glue will come off when if we were to heat up the device which we will I don't want to destroy this board by removing the lens so we need uh, our new good friend Sofix preheater so let's go ahead and preheat this thing Guys, I don't know what the initial problem with this SSD was, but it smells like this so much right now. What is that? I hope it wasn't dropped in some duty toilet. Oh my god. Right, 
donut platform is nice and cool. Now these things are wonder makers. So these sponges, they're like pre-cut magic erasers and they, they're just absolutely awesome at cleaning boards. Look at this, nice thing. Flux, definitely highly recommended. So there were some pads lifted, but they're all lifted on uh, not connected pads, so I don't care about that. There's a second one. Okay, so this is uh, chip number two. According to the notches, the dot pointing to the triangle, drop it in, your chip number one. The dot, the triangle, like this. Next, chip number four, all the way on the bottom. The dot, the triangle. And chip three, the dot, the triangle. So to line it up, I aim at the line to go across in the middle between those two. Because these landing pads are for BGA 152, and we got 132, right? So there's a one line that is excluded, so we should be aiming right in the middle, maybe slightly off center, just so that we know when the solder pulls it in. When it gets, if we're close enough, the tension will eventually bring it in right where it, right where it belongs. So for the flow, I'm gonna drop it to 40. For the temperature, 365. And let's watch them dance. First chip's done. Second is done. Third is done. And the fourth. All are done. Let's get this in the adapter. I got a port zero fired up and ready for it. Power up. HY on, great news, but that's not the uh, confirmation. XPG, Spectix, S20G. You see this here is beautiful matching. 
uh, B A D X, last digits of the serial number. B A D X. I did not make this up. Sector edit. Voila. We got our boot record. It was a good call on not touching the controller. Guys, I know it's risky, but it wasn't just a blind guess. But I remember that I've done this before. It's the same controller, just different brand. I brought the case notes up and I did not have to move the controller over. Controller is original, off the donor, chips are off the patient. Let's pull the MFT first, as always. So I got some good news. Uh, the case went extremely well. The drive is basically uh, performing like it was never broken before. Uh, as a result of the recovery, we have absolutely zero bad sectors. We have full extraction. A sector by sector image has been created. So when the customer gets this device back, it will be just a matter of plugging it in back into the system and it will boot up like nothing was ever broken. Thank you for watching this episode and I'll see you all in the next one.